Hey guys, it's RJ from The Secret Stacks, and today I want to talk about the history of magic in North America, J.K. Rowling's new four short stories, and a couple questions I have after reading them. So first, apparently I'm not a muggle. I knew I wasn't a muggle. All right, okay, I'm a nomad, apparently which is the North American slang term for muggle. Short for no magic, which, okay, not super creative, but whatever, we're Americans. The Brits always have way cooler ways of insulting you, and muggle, again, is way cooler than no mag. So I am a no mag, or am I? <laughs> Sorry, all right, now for question number two. So is there no magic in Canada? I find that kind of hard to believe. I've never been to Canada. I've seen pictures. It looks like a really magical place, but in the entire history of North American magic, the Canadians get no mention at all, especially because it's in the context of the fantastic beasts and where to find them. I'm a little surprised that Canada doesn't get a mention because I feel like in the woods up there would be really where you get a lot of those magical creatures. So question number three, she specifically mentions the Middle Ages as a time when wizards from around the world began to connect, whether it's from brooms or apparition or visions, etc., which again sort of raises the question of what's a timeline for magic? Has magic been around as long as people have? And if so, why did it take them so long to build up the capabilities of traveling across continents? It also brings up the question of magical progress in terms of is it like technological advance? Has there been major jumps like the Industrial Revolution? It really raises a lot of interesting questions that I think are a lot deeper than she wanted to go in these short stories, but it is pretty cool to think about. Okay, question number four. So apparently wizards weren't allowed to associate at all with muggles. Shit, I mean nomads. See what you're doing to me, J.K. Rowling? So they weren't allowed to associate it with nomads. But what about nomad born witches and wizards? It's not a pure blood situation because we know that they are accepted into North American magical society. But what happens when they go to school? What happens with their parents? Are they just not supposed to associate with their family anymore? Which again, I find that hard to believe. What happens to them? What does their family think happens to them? Are they kidnappings, missing kids cases? I'm assuming there's some sort of charm that wipes or alters the memories of their families. But it is interesting to think about. And again, how does that future relationship go on feel like you have one magical sibling, but the rest are no mages. It's kind of hard to walk away from so much to be accepted into magical society. North American magical history really seems to be stained with violence, which I guess is a product of how we're seeing around the world in Britain. I guess it's not that hard to believe. But in particular, I have a few questions about the wars and the conflicts. So during the Salem Witch Trials, why didn't the witches and wizards fight back? It's, we're talking about 17th century Puritans with a few secret scourges, which are these sort of the bad guys of North American magical society. It's not exactly like the Puritans were a world-class fighting force. I get that witches and wizards didn't want to instigate conflict with the nomads, but if you're being killed, I feel like that it's perfectly an acceptable reason to fight back against the concealment laws and just go nuts. Again, 17th century Puritans, I'm not sure exactly are going to be able to stand up to magic. And so what's up with the wars in general? We had a specific mention that witches and wizards from across the world participated in World War I. But because of that specific mention, are we to be led to believe that they sat out the revolution and the civil war? I feel like the American Revolution, because a lot of these wizards were escaping persecution from Europe, it makes a lot of sense that they would side with the revolutionaries. And again, during the Civil War, I feel like there's a big example where magical influence into the Mughal or nomad world, I feel like that's perfectly legitimate. It would have been a great reason to get involved in that war. So it's interesting, and I think obviously the reason she didn't get into it, because those are a couple more raw histories, but it's interesting to think about why and when wizards and witches would choose to get involved in Muggle Wars. And finally, last question, you have a magical congress. 
What do they think about Donald Trump? So question of the day, I'm wondering, what did I miss? What questions do you guys have about the North American wizarding world? Either what J.K. Rowling talked about or something she may not have mentioned or in a future timeline. It's a really interesting thing to think about and a lot of fun. So until next time, see ya.